Our new CNC mill is finally in our shop. COVID delayed our plans by about a year, but it's here and we're ready for it. I bought our CNC router in 2017 as a way to make Knack Studio products. Doing some side job shop work quickly turned into a full-time gig, aka Portland CNC. And the router isn't going anywhere, but we wanted to add another machine for a while, and this mill was just too good of a deal to pass up. So what is it? The mill is a 2015 YCM NXV560A. It is a 25 horsepower Cat 40 Big Plus taper spindle with a 20 tool pocket tool changer. I haven't actually tried it out, but the specs say it has a 1.8 second tool to tool tool change, which is going to be pretty fun to see. The table is 700 by 420 millimeters and it uses a fan at control. Now I can't say I would have sought out a YCM intentionally, but so far I'm pretty happy with what it offers. Our client bought the machine to make quick aluminum molds and only put about 260 hours on it for one project and since then it's mostly been idle. Here's a quick test part we did before moving. If you have a YCM mill or tips in general, please send them over. We are just getting started with the machine and love any advice or experience you might have. If you'd followed us for a while, you'd probably know that our shop was pretty full. Part of bringing in the mill necessitated a tough decision to part ways with our shopmate Joe, who just moved into his new space. He makes phenomenal wood furniture at his company Boundary Fog Furniture. Joe and I moved into the shop in 2019 to share costs and equipment, and we knew at some point we'd collectively outgrow the space. The new mill was the tipping point. Anyway, Joe moved out, and within a few days, we cleaned up and put up some new Nordfab ducting, extending our system past the CNC to use in the rest of the shop. I have a bunch of video on installing the Clearview dust collector system that we haven't posted, and I want to make a video on that along with the Nordfab install coming TBD. Dust collection is a huge priority for us this year as we try to keep the shop really clean for the health of our team as well as just keeping it out of the mill and it's just nicer to work in a clean space. So I think you're going to see quite a bit more along the lines of dust collection. You might be asking yourself, Justin, what about all that sawdust you make? Trust me, I'm concerned too. We're building what we've been calling the Dexter Room around it to give it as much environmental ceiling off as we can. Our original low budget design was to use studs and thin plastic film sheeting to create a separated space. We'd use those dangly plastic strips for doors and push in some filtered air for positive pressure. The whole thing to me gave off that vibe of the kind of space that Dexter does his deeds in. You know, the serial killer TV show? Anyway, my snobby architecture degree side couldn't continue with the shoddy film version, so we're going to use a polycarbonate twin wall on studs method. This should allow light transmission and much better resilience. It's the kind of stuff you use and see in greenhouses, if you're not familiar. I think the name has stuck, though, so we're probably going to continue calling it the Dexterium, I'd imagine. We'll go through the rest of the enclosure design in a future video. Getting it to the shop turned out to be quite simple. We had many months to think it through with no help from the pandemic. So when it came time, I was very happy the mill move went faster than expected. That's why you hire riggers, right? We spent a solid day cleaning it up and deinstalling it the week before the move. Things went incredibly smooth, as you can see these riggers know what they're doing. I was pretty trapped here. I needed to move out of the way quick. Easy, easy, easy. And when you take your GoPro outside your shop, you should set the frame rate right. The whole process of loading it up at the old shop was about 70 minutes from the time the riggers got there till the time it was on the truck, uh, which I was pretty impressed by. Also, forklifts are amazing. Just picked up that 6,600 pound machine like it was a loaf of bread. We plan on using this machine for job shop work and also future products we are coming up with. When we moved the last time, we rented a flatbed truck and a forklift and moved it ourselves. Watching this just made me think how crazy that is. I mean, the machine cost is a little bit different here, but it's also just so easy to mess up. I wouldn't dig it, but I felt the truck drop down when they put it on there. It's kind of funny. I was leaning up against it. Look at all that space. I mean, it was great sharing with Joe. We turned out to be pretty good friends, and it was nice to be able to share resources and obviously offset some costs, but man, is having all that space nice. Smooth sailing once we got it into the shop. I set it down, put it on skates, and pushed it around by hand. 
It's been a little crazy lately, and we've had a new planer sitting on this pallet, and obviously there hasn't been a lot of space, and we also had a planer in Joe's set of equipment, so pretty excited to get that set up. Haven't really tried it out. It's just been under that blanket. And for those of you that uh, don't do woodworking, a planer helps you reduce the thickness of material and make it co-planer with the other side. This was Ricky's first time seeing the machine and had been over at the other shop, and he'd been back at our shop making stuff, so he was pretty excited about it, as was I. I'm not sure if I would have stuck my head underneath that machine, but I guess I'm thankful he did it and I didn't have to. Big side note, if you have any recommendations for better 4-foot tube LEDs with dual ballasts. I'd love to replace the lights in our shop. As you can see, they do this lovely flicker strobe situation. These are all matching Hypericon four foot tubes that are 5,000 Kelvin. I don't know, they seemed like a great pick, but uh, I don't really want to replace all the fixtures, so we're looking for something with dual ballast and four foot tubes. I need about 60 of them. Please let me know in the comments if you have something that would be better. So what's next? Want to see it powered up and running? Me too. As of making this, we have power and air, but we are waiting for a tech to come help set it up right. There's lots more, and we're going to post more regularly on our startup at the mill. We've even got this tasty little trait that we'll get installed and start playing with. I'd love to have you along, so make sure and hit the subscribe button and the bell if you really want to find out when we post. Oh, oh, oh I about forgot. We have new hats and t-shirts, so go check those out. You can get those on our store. Prices include free shipping in the US, so grab a new hat or tee. I've been wearing this gray camper hat and I love it. If you want to support the channel but don't want a Patreon-like subscription, Buy Me A Coffee is the perfect option. The idea of Buy Me A Coffee is to offer someone a cash equivalent of buying them a drink as a thank you. It's a one-time thing to show your support for the channel and keeps the content and coffee flowing. Look for the link below for Buy Me A Coffee. If you want to get our cat and cam models that we show in the videos, subscribe to our Patreon at cnc.money. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed, it's imperative you do. I know if you watched this far, you obviously enjoyed it a little.